What happens when you get into debt? I'll do what I want. I will punch you clean through that window. And you can't. I don't know where I can't go. Or won't pay it back. I can't pay you. I can't pay you. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. Don't tell me to chill. Flipping disgusting. Dealing with desperate debtors. You please open the door. I'm going to struggle to pay this. In dramatic situations. I'm breaking your glasses. We meet the people who are losing their homes. We've got nowhere to go. You can't leave it because if that pipe comes off, it's yeah, life threatening. And their possessions. Will it be all right to tear it behind a transit? Because whatever happens, if you can't pay... Get your hands off me. ..they'll take it away. <laughs> Across Britain, 4.8 million people receive some form of housing benefit to help pay their rent. But since 2013, 46% of renters affected by the benefits cap have fallen into arrears more often. Paul Bowhill and Ben Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. They travel around the southeast, repossessing homes, chasing debts, and seizing goods when debtors can't or won't pay. You're going to go right down St Anne's Road, where the pub is. See, I'm, I'm quite familiar with these northern parts. They're on their way to Finsbury Park, North London, to evict tenant Corrine Green, who's been in rent arrears for almost a year. I don't know why. I've got a bad feeling about this one. Do way. you feel it in your waters? I do. We're looking for Salisbury Mansions. So part um, behind that laguna. You Mind the tree. I'm glad I've got you with me. Right. Kareen has received notice for the eviction from the county court, but the case has now been escalated to the High Court, and the agents are here today to evict her without warning. What number is it? 55. 55. The High Court Enforcement have a repossession order for your flat. Miss Green. Hi. My name's Ben, High Court Enforcement. Madam, my OK. My child is inside and I'm okay. a vulnerable person. OK, will you let me come in and talk to you? No, you can pass me the possession order. That's the writ of possession. Thank you very much. I've got the other possession order from the court. The county yeah, court. And I've also spoken to the council. Yeah. And I've also contacted the landlord and his company. And I have bipolar disorder. Do not make me get upset. OK, madam, I understand. The agents have the right to force entry. But the team are now aware of Kareen's vulnerability. There's no obligation to let you inside. I'm afraid you do, madam. No, actually, I don't. OK, can I explain the situation yeah, right explain. here, right now? Explain. We are from the High Court. That's fine. We are here to execute this writ today. That's fine, also. You have one hour from now to pack a bag and to take your writ that I've given you down to the council. Babe, the police are at my door. We're not so police, madam. Possession order. Kareen calls her boyfriend for help. The door's halfway open because this idiot has got his foot in the door. There's people outside my door. Don't tell me to chill. There's people outside. I suggest you call a solicitor because I'm getting really pissed off. If there are clear visible signs of mental health, it does make it a little more tricky. We just need to try and comfort and reassure them and really try and support them in an emotional way because it's a very distressing situation, especially because you're giving them bad news. We want to try and calm the situation and help them through it. Madam, I'm not here to make things difficult. Well, clearly you are. I'm not. No, clearly you are. I'm only trying no, to No, clearly talk to you. you're here to make things difficult. I've sent the details to my landlord. I've also spoken to the council who have a specific date for me to be out of the property, which the landlord has agreed in email, in writing, right? And I've already explained Calm to down. you. No, I will not. You don't know, yeah, what I've had to deal with with this order possession. Yeah, you keep laughing because it's funny I'm not to you. Corrine claims she agreed a date with her landlord to move out. Despite the shock of today's visit, Paul and Ben are duty bound to enforce the eviction. They need to remain calm and help her understand the situation. Madam, 
calm down. Telling me to fucking calm down. Have you got someone outside your door with their foot wedged in your door, chatting all kinds of shit? So yeah? is it. You're Let clearly it go. trying to upset me and make this situation worse than it needs to be. You're trying to push your way through my door, right? Without knowing my part of the situation. Flipping disgusting. Been here five years and two months. Had I been a terrible tenant, I would understand. If we find somebody who is clearly distressed and may be suffering from mental health issues, we would be very sympathetic. We would listen to them. And a simple technique is that we wait until they've talked it out of their system and then we'll come forward with constructive suggestions on how we would like to deal with it. Now, Kareen calls her father. Dad, I'm not in a very good place right now. I have the police officers... High Court the enforcement. High... Pardon? We're High Court enforcement. We're okay, not police. High Court enforcement at my door. Basically, yeah. Telling me I've got an hour to come out of the property when certain circumstances have already been agreed. Would you like to see those, Mr High Court officer? Absolutely. We... OK, brilliant. If you, if you would like to talk to me, we're not harassing you. Yeah, but you've got your foot wedged in my fucking door. Because you're going to shut the door on me. You say you're a vulnerable person. Could you, could you explain? I have bipolar disorder, right? Oh, we've made progress. I can't hold this much longer. I'm losing blood fibre. Paul steps in to hold the door open, but it's been barricaded from the inside. Madam. Listen, let me tell you something. If you push me through this I fucking door please. today... Hmm? Yeah? If work. you dare push me through this door today, you're going to have a problem. Madam, we just want to talk. Don't you dare force your way through this door. Can you tell your colleague to move the hands yes. from the door? You can come no. in. He won't come in. He oh. won't let me come in on my own. Oh. Let us both in. I'm calling the police. Yeah. yeah. Concerned about Kareen's well-being, Ben asks the police for assistance. He hopes that their presence will calm the situation down. Hi, I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. We're executing a writ of possession. The tenants are very irate, just screaming and shouting at the top of a voice. Uh, I'd say mental health, basically. So we'd need a unit, not within the hour either. We've got um, a High Court writ, so we could force the door down, theoretically. We're on their way, OK? They're taking the mick. He agreed he will not send the High Court or the bailiffs. So he's an arsehole! What started as a straightforward repossession has turned into a volatile situation, which the agents must handle carefully. Paul and Ben must use all their years of experience to keep this difficult eviction under control. I'm already wound up, Dad. I'm well wound up. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Ben Pinner were in North London. What number is it? 55. They were executing an eviction notice on tenant Kareen Green, who'd been behind with her rent for almost a year. I've no obligation to let you go back. I'm afraid you do, madam. But it soon became clear this eviction needed careful handling. Concerned for Kareen's welfare, Ben called the police. The tenant, she's very irate. I'd say the mental health, basically. The police are on their way, but now Kareen's boyfriend, Troy, has arrived to help calm the situation. Hello? What, come in, then. I'm coming, babe. Troy? Sit down for me a second. No, I'm not sitting down nowhere. This man is pushing She's his weight into my fucking door. Hold on, hold on a sec. Right. So High Court, she has to leave. Fine. Yeah. She needs to pack her stuff. Yeah. And then you're going to give her an opportunity to come, to come back, back and take her stuff. I've been trying to explain that. that. But what you've got to understand... Hold on, sir. I must inform you that these obviously are on their way. I understand. No. My colleague's obviously, obviously holding the door, so please don't be alarmed Can by that. Can you move from the door, please? No. Not right this second. Oh, Paul can't move from the door, apparently. He's not going to shut the door. I understand. I didn't ask you to shut the door. Right. I told you to move from Stop. pushing the door. one second. Let me get in, please. Let me Stop. get in. Let me get in. Stop. I'm not pushing the door against there's, you. Yeah, there's something behind the door, by the way. That's what you're pushing it up against. All right. All right. Explain the situation. All right, hold on, hold on. Stop! Um, what are you telling me to stop for? No, Don't tell me to me. stop. He's, he's I'm coming. listening. The best ally we can have in a conflict situation is we enlist the family friend. They know the people involved. They will be sympathetic to them. 
and they, they act as a really good buffer zone between us and the people. They can explain things to them in their own time. Troy has managed to calm Kareem down. I said he can come in. I cannot come in on my own for health and safety. Well, and it's our policy. Paul, in, Paul can come in. Paul, we're going to both go in. After 20 minutes at the flat, the agents finally gain entry. I'm not, I, that's fine. Do you know what? I'm honestly, I'm not a rude person. I'm not even an aggressive person. I'm not even an angry person. We don't know who's behind the door. You don't know what's the ins and outs, which Absolutely. is fine, and I understand All that. All we get is this piece of paper with two names on it. We understand this is the worst situation in the world, but we want to try and make it as smooth as possible. All I need you to do now is pack a bag. Yeah. You oh. will then need to make arrangements to collect the rest of your items. OK, no problem. Kareen knew that her landlord wanted her out and has already started packing. How are we doing? Clothes are already half packed. I'm sorry if you took offence at me. I'll be the most well, helpful person in the world, I, given the chance. I 100% accept your apology. Thank you. I was very upset at the time. No problem at all. Kareen had been on benefits, but started work as a teaching assistant a year ago. She was still entitled to some housing benefit, but Kareen claims that the council consistently miscalculated her entitlement and underpaid the landlord. Despite her attempts to resolve the situation, the shortfall was never cleared. Now, after 12 months of being in arrears, her landlord has had enough. An interesting selection of books. Ah, yes, I do. I work with special needs. Really? I've studied child psychology now. Wow, that's absolutely spot on. Yeah. See, I'm a nice person. See what my students leave for me. Being bipolar, though, does it? how does it affect you? Bipolar can do anything from leave you in a deep depression to manic episodes. Right. Um, you, you're more likely to get yourself in bad places, be around the wrong types of people. It just depends on the person and their surroundings. A few minutes later, the police arrive. But fortunately, Paul no longer needs their help. We just wanted to call a halt. He was going the wrong way. Okay, Hence we call you. Happy and... She's changed her work hours, the benefits yeah. were stopped, the rents got into arrears, the landlord just said enough right. and he's issued the eviction order. Okay. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Kareen's hour to pack up her essentials and leave is nearly up. No documents will be left in this property, none. <laughs> Because if I can't find my stuff, then the council want to tell me, oh, but you don't have this paper, oh, you don't have that paper. Oh, we can't help you. Anything that I've handed in, I make sure I make copies of everything. As you walk in, do they all get up and walk out? Yeah, they pretty much do. Uh, it's even worse when I'm having a bipolar episode because I'm determined to get everything done. Well, they don't actually see the sharp end like this. Yeah. The council say, please don't panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take two months before yeah, yeah. the bailiff gets to you. But what they should then say is, unless the landlord takes this to the High Court, yeah. in which case it could happen overnight. Exactly. And then when people come in there with an attitude, they get upset and then, like, don't give me an attitude, you must leave the office, blah, blah, blah. But um, Can I actually say this as a compliment? You yeah. do attitude to perfection. You're yeah, an absolute no. diva. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Kareen is determined to make the move for her young daughter as smooth as possible. But there's one family member who's not cooperating. Still haven't found the cat. Rosie. My daughter named my cat after my mum. Oh. My mum wasn't impressed. <laughs> but the next cat we have, we'll call it Ben. Oh, I think that's a compliment. Let's push this one. Told you got not. Her? Cat chase. She's not just going in the bathroom. He's got her. The cat is in the bag. We're ready to go. Kareen and her daughter are now homeless. Let's go. Yeah. I have no idea where I'm going to stay. I don't know where the council's going to put me. I just know that I'm a vulnerable person who has bipolar and a six-year-old child. I know that much. It will be up to the local council to find emergency accommodation for Kareen and her daughter tonight. Personal debt is continuing to rise nationwide. 
It currently stands at nearly one and a half trillion pounds. But over half of all people in relationships don't know how much debt their partners are in. Seven a.m. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Sutton, Surrey, with a writ to recover nearly two thousand pounds. We're going to say Mr. Robert Grochowitz. He owes money to Marcin Stefaniak, one thousand nine hundred and two pounds and fifty-nine pence in the first instance. Might just be a personal debt. So really, it's moved very swiftly on this one. The debt was originally an eight hundred pound unpaid county court judgment. But now, with enforcement costs and legal fees, it has more than doubled. Round the corner now, chap. Left is right. Oh, so 17, that not <laughs> If Mr. Grochevitz can't or won't pay, the agents have the authority to seize goods to the value of the debt. Got your badge? Yeah. Charlie Handel, shall we? Straight away, Dell has his eye on an asset. Oh, open already. Have a look. You don't say. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Is Robert here? How are you, Robert? My name's Brian. I'm a High Court enforcement agent. I'm here with a High Court writ. Thank you, sir. Do you want to put some clothes on? Do you want to get a T-shirt or some clothes on? We'll wait for you. Yeah. Robert, uh, you're Robert, yeah? Is that you, yeah? OK, Mr Martin and Stefanik took you to court. We've got an outstanding balance of £1,902.59, and pence. we're here to collect it. Do you know who he is? No. You don't know who he is at all? No. Isn't that odd? No idea at all? No idea. OK. It's not uncommon for debtors to claim they don't know the claimant because they don't want to pay it, but um, I don't believe a word of it. We've done this job a long time. We're pretty good judges of characters. Call it intuition and call it experience. Call it what you like, but we just get the knack. We know when people are lying to us. Robert claims he doesn't owe anything, but the High Court writ says otherwise. Well, he knows you and he knows where you live. You know about this debt, don't you? So we're not here because we want to be here. We've been, we're here because we've been sent here, yeah? Because you owe money. I don't care. Well, I do. Tell you what you do. It's £1,902 at the moment, right? If you carry on like this, wasting time, it's going to go up. How much? £1,902. £1,000? You say Well, you didn't know about it. It appears Robert is aware of the debt, after all. So you know how much the original amount was? So tell me who... No, I don't know what's so he knows exactly why we're here. I don't like being lied to. I can't trust anything you say. If I can't trust anything you say, I can't believe you, which means you need to find the money to pay this in full. Robert's wife comes downstairs to find out what's going on. Yes, I don't know this man. I don't know this man. Robert is still denying any knowledge of the debt, so Dell turns up the pressure. As you're walking about, you might be able to think of someone can help you out. It's early now. It's 7 o'clock. If you I can't can pay it... I can give money today, definitely, okay. but I need some time. Your bill might go up by 8 o'clock. Why? Because we're not here to spend all day. But I'm... Make some calls and we'll see how you get on, yeah? I suggest you put some clothes on, sir. Let's have a look around. Robert starts trying to raise some funds, but the agents aren't taking any chances and draw up an inventory of goods they can seize to offset the debt. This includes the cars on the driveway. The vehicles outside, are they yours? Yeah. Yeah. Van, I want to love books for both the cars. I think both cars might be in his name. That's why I thought I love them. Yeah. <laughs> Go into a debtor's house, the most expensive asset a person would normally have is a vehicle. If it's got no finance, you've got something to target him with, really. Only five minutes, right? OK, that's so fine. Thank you very much. The threat of losing his possessions has prompted Robert to try and raise some funds. Can your work help you? Sorry? 
Yeah. And your work help you? Oh, okay, okay. What would you do? Okay. A colleague has agreed to help him out. Yeah, I have I don't have. Was well, he transferred that into your account, has he? Yes. OK. So what we need is £902.58 now. The agents won't accept Robert's £1,000 offer. He needs to raise the full amount. And his wife wants answers. The most common thing I find, particularly if there's couples, is that one may not know of the debt, and that leads to an issue between them in terms of trust and how their relationship is. We've got strange men in our house saying that her partner owes money and she knows nothing about it. 15 minutes after denying all knowledge of the debt, Robert has found most of the money. I've got one seven. One seven? I've got one seven right now. We need another 200 pounds. I know, I know. OK, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's take the one seven, and you pay me by one o'clock the rest, yeah? At least one o'clock. That's fine. Good call, please. Top. 1,700, yeah? Even though Robert has agreed to pay, he still says he knows nothing about the debt. I'm not cross with you, but no. I don't know this person. Robert, I told you... 1,902 pounds, that's the only figure I gave you. Then you told me it was 800 and something, and I never told you that figure. You say in front of my door we need to collect 900,000. No, I didn't. Oh. <coughs> okay, we'll bet to differ. I'm a good person, I think. Absolutely, you are. And I'm a responsible father. I want to save my family. The money's stored for 14 days with the High Court so you can dispute it. Robert has paid 1,700 pounds. But if he doesn't pay the remaining £200 by one o'clock, the agents will be back to seize goods. You know exactly what it's worth. I told him, like, yeah. two quid, and he went, oh, it was only 800 something, so I was like, boom, you know exactly what it's worth. What's happened is he hasn't told his wife. And he's had to start <laughs> it out a little bit. That's, that's what's happened there. He'll say whatever he needs to in front of his wife. Otherwise, he wouldn't be agreeing to pay the rest of the money. Maybe, you know, there's so many ins and outs in the building game, you know, they get contractors daily, don't they? So, you know... Right. I'm a granddad again. Oh, wow. You Congratulations, know, that's right. Yeah. I better... He's a... Yeah. Well, crack a smile, Bon. Crack a smile. <laughs> there you go. I better find out what his name is. Brian. <laughs> God forbid. Brian. God forbid. Call him Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Brian. Brian and Dell have got the result they needed. But on their next case... I yeah. said 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock! No, don't, don't like that. No, don't, don't, don't. Don't wake your fingers. Right, right. An angry father and son put them in a volatile situation. This is the bloody thing. If the, the other two officers is calm, then I will fight it. Cash flow is a growing problem for UK companies. 85% of small and medium-sized businesses are currently affected by late payment of invoices, with an average of nearly £32,000 owed to each firm. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Northampton to recover a debt of nearly £3,000 owed to an insurance company. What have we got next, Del? We are going to Empire Cars mm -hmm. on the Grafton Street Industrial Estate. Empire Cars is a taxi firm, and the owner, Mr Tarib Ali, has already paid half the debt. What road do we want? We want Cornway, Unit 6. Mr Ali agreed to pay the balance within two weeks. We want Office 1 over there. But he didn't stick to the agreement. This time, there won't be any second chances. Morning, gentlemen. Empire Cars? Yeah. OK. Morning. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. Come to collect the rest of the monies that you owe. Who's the man I need to speak to? How long have we got? You've got now. Next week. No. 
that's your opening gambit. This is my opening gambit. If you're not going to pay now, I will remove your things. OK? So, what do you want to do? What's the balance now? It's £2,950, £22. Do you and Kev the costs, unfortunately? Because you didn't pay when you were supposed to, did you? Because the defendant has defaulted, the debt has risen by nearly £1,000. Now Brian and Dell need payment in full today. But first, they need to establish who is the debtor. I pay, I say, I have to pay next two months for the two payments. But all finished. I'm begging you already half, right? That was a month ago. Well, oh, hang on. OK, who, who's, who's the boss? Who's in charge? Whose company is it? It's your name, please. Ali. Mr Tarib Ali is the debtor, and he seems unwilling to cooperate with the agents. This is the dodgy thing. Are you going to pay it? Oh, if it's the dairy coming, but I'm not opening the door, I will be fight them. There's no need for that. Mr Ali's son, Rahman, claims that an arrangement was made with the agent's office to delay payment. All the lady from on the phone is her client was uh, willing to accept payments what they made the payment what? in October. The family claim that the agent's visit is a mistake. Many times for the bloody that? office. That's what you said. That's why it was ah, So you're thinking that they've asked us to come because yeah. they've messed up. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. If the, the other two officers is come, then mm. I will pack it. Would you? Yes. No. Because I'm big naughty man in before. If if there's been a mess up. Yeah. I apologise. But Brian is suspicious. Dale, give me two minutes. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Can I pick your brains on the case? Okay. Brian calls the office to find out whether their claims about an agreement to pay later are true. HCW 2513. Is there any arrangement on the system? I spoke to this debtor because the balance was due at the end of September. I tried to clear it over two or three months. Uh -huh. I said, well, you know, that wasn't really the agreement. It's starting to fall in the charges. It's going to go to the claimant and make them allow him to have more time. OK. And I advised him at that point that threatening our clients is unacceptable. OK, thank you, bye. It's clear that Mr Ali did not have an agreement to defer the second payment. That is not right. Stuart came here on the 3rd, took half the payment on the basis that you pay the balance at the end of September. It's all recorded, yeah? That is, in this job, will always be deceitful, difficult, throw walls up in front of you. When I know someone's lying to me, they've set the tone, as far as I'm concerned. Despite Mr Ali and his son's protests, they must pay £2,900 today. If they don't, the agents will seize goods to offset the debt. You know what this piece of paper says? I am commanded to seize in execution your goods. That's the High Court telling me that. So if you don't want to pay it, that's fine. You can have that, sir. Let me give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I will give it to you. Take it. Take this. Here. Have it. If you're not paying, mate, just tell me so I can call the van. But then... Mr. Ali's son, Rahman, makes another unexpected claim. Originally, this debt, yeah, is not even belong to Empire. Nothing to do with me. Let's cut this short. You were given enough time to get this set aside. Rahman says that his father has passed the company to him and that he paid off the first half of the debt, even though he didn't feel responsible for it. If you're not liable for it, what have you done about it? I just couldn't be bothered to go through okay. the passive and getting my money back, right? Okay. You couldn't be bothered to do it. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered. OK. I couldn't be bothered to Let's hold it there. In Let's hold it there. To get my two thousand. Let's hold it there. Back. Mr Ali might have passed the cab company to Rahman, but the writ still allows the agents to chase the business for payment. You please, you give me another week time. The reason I need it paid today mm. and now mm. is because he couldn't be bothered to do anything about. You just put another fucking nine hundred pound on top of that mm -hmm. shit. Because you failed to no, keep your end of the. You nothing. know what, bruv? It's a very easy. I I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what you do. I'll tell you what you do. Long story short, sir. Yes. Get the, do me a favour. Get yeah. me the balance of this money. Okay. Well, now. Right? No, yeah. yeah. How? Yeah. I don't know. And you... We don't get involved no, in no, disputes. No, 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 right? Don't uh, like. Don't no, talk no, like that. Don't, 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 don't. Don't wag your finger. Why, why? I'm being very polite with you. Throwing your arms about, screaming and shouting. He's not going to phase me. No, it just makes me dig in a little bit harder that I won't suffer that sort of nonsense. But we're not going to be bullied. You're going to pay. After 20 minutes of arguing about the debt, Dell's patience has run out. Unplug. That's cool, bruv. We're going to remove, bruv. 
With no sign of payment, the agent's only option is to seize goods. I'm not here to play. I'm here to do my job. Keep your money, bruv. Get out of my sight. What? What? Back, get out of your sight. Who are you speaking to? Listen, get out of my sight. You did say that. Get out of my sight. No, while I'm here, it isn't, is it? Then suddenly, Rahman changes his stance. Two o'clock, your full balance clip. Two o'clock. How are you going to make that payment? Doesn't what do you mean? Matter, Sorry. Card, cash, whatever. What okay, do you mean it doesn't matter? Fine, I don't fine. like you being rude, bro. I said two o'clock. Two o'clock! Shall I speak to you the way you speak to me? Wait and take a seat. It's, it's now ten past one, yeah? I'm Del, one. I'm happy with two, yeah? No, we, we, we stay here, it's no problem. Thank you. The taxi firm has under an hour to come up with the money. If they don't, the agents will start taking assets. We're not here to be shouted at or disrespected in any way. We've tried to talk to them and just lay out the facts. You've got to remember, there's five or six of them in there. Yeah, and they want to raise their voice and maybe stunt their authority, but they, they're, not, they're not in charge, we are. While they wait, Dell starts making a list of assets they can seize if the two o'clock deadline is missed. When you guys get upset at the wrong people, man, it's not us. It's not a nice job, is it? Well, let's put it this way. If a man owed you money, do you want him and me to go and get it? Or do you want someone who's going to go out there and say, well, we'll accept five pound a week, please? Would you? You want your money? So that's my seat. Is it? Since you are so nicely. As two o'clock approaches, Mr. Ali still tries to strike a deal. You good? How much I want to pay now? It's gone beyond that. It's gone beyond that now. Yeah, it's it. Come on. It's, it's all got to be done now. When dealing with debts involving families, family pride does get in the way because there's, there's someone's taking responsibility for the family um, and ultimately will take responsibility for making sure the debt's paid. With minutes to go before the deadline, Rahman's cousin and sister arrive to pay off the debt. So 700 is cleared. There's 2,250 pounds, 22 pence. Thank you for helping, both of you. Dell's tactics have paid off. The debt has been collected in full. All paid. All done. It's nice to see they came together and got it paid. A little frustration. But at the end of the day, these default with the arrangement given. You know, a bit more transparency, it'll be probably dealt with a lot easier and quicker. Yeah. But hey-ho, it's done. And yeah, we'll move on to the next one. In Britain, the number of households renting in the private sector has increased by over 3 million since 2001. But 11,000 families in England and Wales were evicted by private landlords in the first three months of last year. Steve Pinner and Ru Pabari are High Court enforcement agents. Today they're in Portsmouth to repossess a property. I've driven 100 miles today to get here. It's stopped raining for now anyway. The tenants have lived in the property for two years, but the landlord told them five months ago that she was selling up and wanted them out. All being well, should be, hopefully, relatively straightforward. They never go straightforward. Yeah, I know. That's the problem, isn't it? To speed up the eviction, the landlord has fast-tracked the case to the High Court. It looks like on the paperwork that uh, there's going to be a locksmith. Yeah. It's just a straightforward writ of possession that they won't know anything about, as always. They just pull up over here. But the locksmith is already at the property. Hi there, morning. I'm your locksmith. Nice to meet you. You're, uh... Just kicking off on one, uh, I arrived and basically they're, uh, they don't know nothing about it. Well, they don't. That's why nobody should have gone there till we got there. Difficult when you get to a job and somebody's already been there and told them that you're on your way. It's bad enough just opening the door and them seeing you, but they're expecting you now, so they're, like, ready for you. So you're on the back foot to start with. The tenant, Victoria Mansa, and her partner, Shane, knew their landlord wanted them out, but they didn't know it would happen so soon. OK, so you are... Victoria. Victoria. OK, Victoria. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Yeah, yeah. Can I just get through it, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
This is a rip from the High Court. Oh, we're not getting told that today, obviously. I've got a... Yes, you are. Okay. Oh, don't tell me. Why are okay. you going to though? I respect what you're doing. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to be Good. an arsehole with you like that, right? i about that. But... We've been told. We was told. No, let me speak. We was told we would get a letter, a time and a date, okay. so we can get our stuff out prior to you coming. Okay. We would have done that, and we would have just gone. There you go. There's the keys. Okay. Right. Let now, me... this has not happened. Okay. Now, right. where are we going to go now? I'm a bit livid, okay. right? Okay. The council. They told me that obviously it would take at least another week for you to come out. They've misled you. Yeah. Yeah. Bottom line, I'm sorry. Would you give us enough truth. time to get all our stuff out on the street then? What we do is get you an hour to get your personal effects together. Things you'll need for a few days. Gee, I've got my relative stuff in here. And then you can make an arrangement. Well, my oh. landlord's not going to do that. She has to. She won't do that. She has to. You don't know my landlord. It's clear that the landlord's decision to fast-track the eviction has come as a shock to the couple. I don't trust my landlord one well, bit. I'm sorry. Well, I, it's not you. I understand that. It's upsetting. I understand that. Yeah, I get that. Little, sure. Be... What you need to do is you need to get everybody up, dressed and ready, yeah. take this letter yeah. and the children with you down to the council. You've got to change the locks, so yeah. we'll let you get on. The family had already started to pack their belongings. This is out of order, and a one-year-old and a five-year-old, right? And they shouldn't be seeing this. This is wrong. The tenants are legally entitled to return to the property at a later date to collect their possessions. But Shane decides to empty the entire house. So there's not a lot we can do other than just wait for him to empty the house and lock it up. I'm going to kick off in a minute if I'm going to my fucking way. All right, all right, all right. Tenants say to us that it's the landlord's fault. That's why we're in this position. And I try and explain to them that, you know, it has been through the court. The court has decided in the landlord's favour and they have to leave. It's an unfortunate situation. We're asking them to leave what, to what's considered their home. The family's possessions are piling up on the pavement. Oh, you're having a flip in that bubble. It's bloody raining. This is not even my gear. It's going to be ruined. I don't know how many times I told him that she has to let him back in to collect his stuff. But if you can't reason with someone, you can't reason with someone. Half hour or so. Seeing all her belongings on the street is taking its toll on Victoria. I hope you haven't put all your clothes in here. You need to get changed into something. I'm really fast about getting changed right now. Oh, shit. The family has managed to get most of their possessions out of the house. What is going on? But then, Victoria's mum arrives. What is going on? They told you that they didn't serve. They okay. The okay. Fucking, I don't believe it. Hang on, mum, don't go off your nuts. Right, is that it? Is that everything out of the house? Yeah, everything. Oh, right. he's mugging. Right, so now what? I'm going to try and get it somewhere to store them. Right, that's all right. Yeah, shit. Tensions are rising. But then a friend of the landlord also arrives. I must put the keys up for the Oh, right. The house. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Pick up the keys to house. Little friends come down the keys to house. Out. Yeah, well, tell her to go and fuck herself. How about that? That's the landlord's husband, I swear down. Oh, you can't. No. No, he's here, collect the keys. Oh. 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 Right, you know what I'm making? You pay the rent or yeah, you need to do whatever. So don't start giving me the money. I've been asked to come over and get keys, and that's it. Come here and get fucking keys in, you fucking prick. I'll go something, eh? Oh, whatever. With emotions running high, will Steve and Rue be able to stop this volatile eviction from spiralling out of control? Wait a minute. High Court enforcement agents Steve and Rue were in Portsmouth to evict a family from their home. This is out of order, and I've got two kids here. I've got a one-year-old and a five-year-old, and they should be seeing this. Steve gave the tenants an hour to collect their personal items. We'll kick off in a minute. Try and get out of my fucking way. All right, all right, all right. But with trust between the landlord and tenants completely broken down, Shane and Victoria decided to empty the whole house. I don't know how many times I told him that she has to let him back in to collect his stuff. What is going on? When Victoria's mum arrived... Yeah, I don't believe it! 
The situation became heated. It's all right. Be all right. It's shit. And the arrival of a friend of the landlord's saw tempers reach boiling point. Why come here? Why come here and get a fucking keys there, you fucking freak? I'll go to somebody, yeah. mate. Oh, fucking whatever. Up. Now Steve needs to use all his years of experience to keep the eviction on track. You, you don't need it. Yeah. You definitely don't need it. I'll call it later. It's all done. Yeah, that's always the best thing. Yeah. Give it an hour. Well, I don't know how long they're going to take to get the colour bands out. Yeah. Comes another couple now. They come and have a go. Get in your car and have a nice day. Thank you very all much. All the best. Enjoy. Take care. Yeah. All the best. But just as Steve manages to defuse one situation, Shane's mother arrives. Oh, I'm going to get another earache. This is none of your fault, mate. What's all that? None of your fault. <laughs> She claims the council have refused the family's request to be rehoused, despite Shane telling them his landlord was going to evict them. Where's the council amongst all this? Yeah. This is not her fault. Well, the council are very busy to everybody else. The council sees everybody else that comes into this country, but they don't see to my own son. The council see to everybody else. They help everybody else that comes into this country, but when it comes to their own, there's lived here, born here, born in Bloody Olinda Street, in Portsmouth, all the families here, and they don't even help their own. This is ridiculous, look at it. All their possessions. The council knew that they would be, they, that needed help, but they haven't been able to do nothing. People kept coming from everywhere, shouting and having a pop, but you just have to be aware of everybody around you you know where you are and how safe you are. Inevitably, nine times out of 10, they do tend to calm down because you have a calm approach. News of the eviction has attracted the attention of the whole street. Man, dirty washing. That's embarrassing. I don't know what you're going to do with this. Well, I'm going to have to wait now for a van and take to a storage unit. With no disrespect to you, like we don't know you, we don't know the agent, landlord or whoever is, no. we just get our instructions and get an address. Yeah. So that, that leaves us totally impartial. Despite the protests, the family has emptied the entire house. I need to clear this park What can we do? I need to get a van. So you're all done now? I think we're done. Can I just have a look? Yeah, have a look come, yeah, come, yeah. Because I've got to go around and shut all the windows, lock the doors so forth and so on. Uh, you can't do that, they're fixed. <laughs> I was amazed at the speed they actually emptied the house because I know how long it would take me to empty a property of my own and try and move. I can't figure out how they did it so quickly. You just want to get it done and done, dusted. Mm. I've gotten a bit of a <laughs> brain fix to get everything out. <laughs> OK, I'm just going to lock up upstairs. Once upon a time, this house was really lovely and decorated. This is what I'm on about. I used to pay, I spent some money in this house. I've even decorated upstairs. I've decorated my boys' room. I've decorated the front room, the hallway, everything, to make it look nice. I just can't believe it's happened now. I didn't expect this one bit. Two bedroom terrace house is all out in front on the pavement. Uh, okay, well, I'm actually gonna lock your door now. Yep. The eviction is now complete. I wish you good luck. I'm going to take it to storage now, right. anyway, so. Good luck. Shane, Victoria, and their children are now homeless. It will be up to the council to find them emergency accommodation for the night. Time. Vic and Stuart meet a debtor in denial. I don't even know £2,000. Well, we're going to see some evidence, son, sir. Steve and Ben face a heartbreaking eviction. I don't know what's going to happen to her. Will she be sleeping on the streets tonight? And the agents get a hostile reception. Come on, come on, big man. When they try to find out who owns a family business. Please untouch me. I'll do more than touch you. 
And new Can't Pay Will Take It Away continues next Wednesday at nine. But what do little doggies do when we, we're not looking, eh? If only we had a spy cam to film the secret life of puppies. Oh, apparently we do, and we're switching it on tomorrow night at nine. Nightmare Tenants is up next.